In the last video I talked about how you would trace an open circuit uh, on some horn strobes or on an FCPS. Uh, and in this video I want to get into something fairly similar but instead of an open circuit I'm going to talk about a ground fault. I think somebody requested that. Um, talking about ground faults is difficult because there's a lot of different potential causes of ground faults. Um, I've got an ongoing job right now that's proving to be kind of tricky to find, um, but obviously we're going to start with the basics. So let's assume that what we have is an FCPS or a NAC extender or a power supply like we've looked at in the last few videos, and it's got a ground fault on it. So we know that that would show itself as this light. Oh, that's not working. Why is that not working? Hmm. Anyway, so the ground fault light on the bottom would be solid. That would show itself on whatever is triggering your FCPS. This is a point I did not make in the last video and I probably should have. If you look down here at the input side, whatever's triggering your power supply, whether that's a NAC off of your main fire panel, whether it's a control module, that's going to open up. I, you know, I've got a video where I talked about the FCPSs and I explained how the positive side of this is connected, well so is the negative, but the positive side will open up on a trouble causing this circuit here to not see its end line resistor. So when there's a trouble that opens you get a trouble on whatever that is. So the FCPS itself does not supervise the, the input, right? It's, the, it's whatever's triggering it that is supervising it. So this resistor here that I circled is, has nothing to do with the FCPS. This power supply does not care if that resistor exists or doesn't. It's, that's for the circuit that's triggering it. So whether you have an open circuit, whether you lose AC power, whether you lose battery power, any of those troubles is going to trigger an op is going to cause an open circuit on your trigger. Um, I believe I explained that, although I haven't watched any of those videos in the last six years, so I don't remember. There are some differences about how that operates, how this open circuit operates versus this aux trouble contacts. And there are people that argue you should use both, and they're probably not wrong, but in most cases, it depends on dip switch settings, and um, it boils down to whether or not you have supervision of your troubles, of troubles when your FCPS is activated or in alarm. So in my personal opinion, it's a little, it's kind of petty, but there's no harm in throwing a monitor module uh, on these aux trouble contacts. You just might get two troubles anytime this goes into trouble. But as usual, I digress. And so we're going to talk about ground faults. And so if you get a ground fault on an FCPS, it's going to show up as an open circuit on your trigger, unless you have a unique point monitoring the trouble here. So um, that would have been true of an open circuit. It would have been true of a ground fault. It would have been true of an AC power fail, whatever. We're, we, we now have an open circuit on our trigger. And so we get to the panel and we see that this ground fault light down here is now illuminated, right? So you don't know what's in ground fault. You gotta, you gotta troubleshoot it. Um, it could be that any one of your outputs, one of those circuits is touching ground. Could be that your batteries are leaking and grounding out. Most likely, nine times out of 10, it's something on your output. So what you'll do is you'll disconnect them one at a time until that light goes out. So I know I just said we were gonna disconnect these circuits one at a time, but um, I decided to, it was easier to draw them just disconnected all at once. If you were to move these one at a time and wait for your ground fault light to go off, that's fine. Um, that's definitely a decent way to troubleshoot it. But if you are able to read the meter, you trust yourself reading a meter, then there's no harm in disconnecting them all, seeing the ground fault light go out, and then just start taking meter readings. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. So the first thing we're going to do is take one leg of our meter. It doesn't matter which one. Um, and we're going to go to earth ground. So this is as good of a ground as any. So we'll take our negative and go there. 
and then we'll take our positive leg of the meter and start going one by one to each leg of these outputs, these NAC circuits. We know that these are not going to have voltage on them unless somebody really screwed up in the field. So uh, we're comfortable setting our meter to resistance. If you want to get in the habit of just checking for voltage first, that's fine. You're not going to hurt anything, but uh, it's really not that serious. So anyway, um, now there's there's a whole range of readings that you could get here, and it's important that you understand what those readings mean. Um, that's kind of the point to some of these videos. Um, the I, it, I don't know when the best time to get into that is. I, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to put it off for a little bit. So we're just going to assume that you either have an open here or a dead short to ground. Um, and then I'll get into some of the other potential readings and in what those readings mean shortly. So for now, let's say we go through the first one and we get that OL. I looked that up and it says, uh, what I found is that means overload, um, which kind of seems strange, but it's like, the capacitance level or the, the resistance level is too high for the setting. So you would need to set it to an even higher level, which you can't on this meter. So um, just basically for all for our intent here, OL means open. You could <laughs> open line or overload, however you want to think of it. But essentially that's like there's infinite resistance to ground. There is zero continuity to ground, right? In some sense, what resistance is measuring is the absence of continuity. If you had a dead short to ground, you would meter a very low number like 0 0.2 or 2.0, you know, a very low number. Um, the closer to zero that number, obviously the less resistance, so the, gr the um, greater the continuity. Um, so all right, we're going to assume that you went through this first red wire, it was open, you went to the gray or black wire that was open, and then the same thing on the next two. Let's just, we're making up a scenario, let's say that when we metered these two wires, that's when we got our ground fault. And I circled NAC3. So, let's say on NAC3 on the red, when we're set to resistance, we got 3.2 ohms. Now there's a good chance something weird would happen, or at least something that might seem weird, when you take your meter off and you go to the other wire. And that is what I would expect to get would be 4.7 K ohm, or somewhere in that range. And the reason is, if you imagine that circuit where you had your positive and your negative, it went out to a device, then, you know, out to the next one, out to the next one, out to the next one, and then at some point you had your resistor, the other leg of the circuit, same thing. And let's imagine this whole circuit is run in a in conduit, right? And that conduit's grounded. That's a terrible drawing because obviously um, your devices are going to be outside of the conduit, but just to give you a ground reference here. Now if you had your ground was touching at say the third horn strobe on the circuit, so right there, and we went and we metered from our negative to ground and our positive to each circuit, when we meter positive, essentially what we're metering here is this path, right? It's going to, current's going to take the path of least resistance. So we're metering a dead short there. Now when we meter the other side, when we take our meter lead off of positive and go to negative, what we're you could already see where I'm going with this, I'm sure. What you're going to be metering is the resistor and then ground. So that reading is going to show up. So the first white 
path I traced was our whatever I said it was 3.2 ohms or you know depending on how far away the ground fault is from your meter that number is going to creep up a little bit the further it gets away so that was the first reading we made the second reading on the negative wire we're actually reading through the resistor in ground so if you get to a scenario where you've got a dead short to ground on one leg more than likely you're going to see your resistor um, through the other one so if the first one you meter is 4.7 K and you're on the red well then that tells you your dead shorts gonna be on the black and you'll just move your meter over and confirm it so once you know you have your ground fault on that circuit troubleshooting that hopefully is fairly obvious to you it's going to be um, pretty much the same as how we troubleshot the open we're just gonna be meeting metering for something else um, different people will handle this different ways one option is to land that circuit back uh, onto the FCPS so that when you're out in the field um, you know you'll have voltage one way your end line the other and it would tell you where your short is um, another option would be to put a different valued resistor so if you know you have a 4.7 at the end of the circuit maybe you put a 47 or a 10k or something uh, to tell you what your panel is it, it, it's arbitrary obviously so you would just make that up you would know okay I put a 10k at the panel so now anytime I go to the field meter a 10k that re represents my panel so in the in the, the last time that we troubleshot the open circuit we took our meter we metered these two wires right and we assumed we had let's assume that we had hooked that back up so we have our three volts and our ground fault is not that way we could put you know we can meter one leg to the we know it's on our red so we can go from red you know one one meter lead to red the other one to the conduit assuming that you know we had all these boxes connected that's another point i guess i should make if you're in a if you're in an application where you've got um just like floating cable you may not have a great ground reference like if these if these junction boxes are mounted to let's say wood you know you might not trust you're gonna actually be using some other ground reference like a nearby sprinkler pipe or door frame or something and that, that makes it a little bit tricky uh, there's other things you could do too if your ground is on your red then you could take your black back at the panel and put a little jumper on tie your black to ground so now you've got a good ground reference so you have 3.2 ohms to ground on your red make this black a ground reference at the panel and now anytime you get out in the field you're troubleshooting red this is your new ground reference the only thing with that then is you go to your first device before you go to your second you're gonna have to tie them back together so we're assuming we took a horn strobe down here you would either put the horn strobe back up if the, if that wasn't the location of your ground fault or you would wire nut these together temporarily so that you had that continuity black to black to the next device and again that's only if you don't have a good ground out while you're troubleshooting you know out in the field while you're troubleshooting so um, the only real difference uh, between troubleshooting this type of circuit or this type of problem I should say and the open circuit is what you're metering right so uh, I'm not I don't have the meter drawing handy um, but I'm sure you guys get the idea we're gonna meter resistance from here to here from red to the conduit so let's say this was your red meter lead you know what I'm gonna pause this and I'll get the uh, I'll get the meter so we could set this to resistance we could go red to red the color is kinda of arbitrary here we're gonna go black to our conduit that's our ground reference or in the other example I gave if we didn't have a good ground reference then we would have tied off our black at the panel and we could use that right um, but let's say we're open back to the panel we get our OL okay that's fine now we're gonna move on to the next box or maybe we skip a few right like you're, maybe maybe we go all the way to the last one and now we're going black to the box again red to let's say this red wire and in this example I'm assuming that these are still connected so I'm showing them as disconnected but assume right now they're connected um, let's say we're open to the end of line so we have an OL that way and if we were to 
meter instead of meter and ground we were to meter this other black wire we get our end line resistor well now we know it's somewhere between the last two right so you're just going to use common sense and keep going now one thing that will change is um, when you do meter your ground fault it's not going to be 3.2 it's going to change in every spot you're at because what you're metering is the continuity to ground, the, the, the resistance to ground. And so the closer you get to that number, I'm sorry, to the actual ground fault, the lower or closer to zero that number is going to get. So if you were to just take your red and black meter leads and touch them together, you're going to get like 0 0.1 ohms. Um, if you were to meter, I'm just making this number up, let's say you meter a 20 foot wire that's 14 gauge solid you know, maybe you'd get one ohm or something like that. Um, as you do this more, you'll start to know what those numbers mean. So if you had 10 ohms to ground, you know your ground fault's a, you know, a pretty good distance away. But if you had two ohms to ground, you know you're pretty close to it. And so you'll just kind of work your way whichever direction it's taking you.